Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Next, I'm going to cut a slot across here that will give me more surface to weld that's actually below the surface. What I need to do now 
is set this little small piece of pipe right here and weld it. And uh, of course, as soon as I put the torch, this thing is just going to fall off. So start off with a piece of brass rod, hold it straight. And I've come up across this problem enough times. I've actually made a fixture holding the rod in place. And that way I can eyeball it to get it square in both directions. And uh, two quick tacks and I'll move on to the next one. may have holes that are too small for it to go through. And that seems pretty simple you just to make a hole a little bigger. But uh, when you're using drill bits with thin sheet metal, as it breaks through, it always catches. And then this starts spinning with the drill bit, and you're trying to hold on to it, and bad stuff happens. There's just simply no way that you're going to hold this against the drill press when it uh, snags. And you never know when it's going to. Now the solution to that is to have a jig that will hold the piece. And then you can hold on to this jig. You've got it clamped in place like this. Fired. 
there is usually always a surprise in here. And this is a little more surprising than most. These white wires come down the trunk. That's, that's the main power feed. They go into these little screw-type connectors, which is uh, common in Europe. They use a lot of that kind of stuff. I see that. What's really weird is these strange little thumb screw connectors that apparently have been abandoned at some time in the past, probably with good reason. But I've never actually seen that. They're actually riveted into the body with uh, copper rivets. That is bizarre. Certainly won't be reusing them. Running the wire is pretty straightforward. It is easier on the chandeliers where the wire, where the arms are wired on the outside. You don't have to pull a wire through a hollow tube. But also, on the other hand, this has got to be very neat and presentable because that's what you're going to see. And when all of these are put on and wired down, we'll have to mix some paint to match so they blend in with the chandelier on. For the main trunk wire, I'm using a pre-made lamp cord which has the molded plug on it. Two reasons for that. One is that uh, it makes testing it much easier. I just have to plug it in. And second, by the foot, this wire is actually cheaper than the wire that you buy on the roll. Underground Laboratories rail trolley, I can move the chandelier away from the bench where I've got to work right now and it uh, won't be in my way. Now inside the chandelier body where the trunk wire meets the arm wires, there's going to be these connections. And the traditional way to do this is the bare wires are twisted and then twisted again and a wire nut is installed. A wire nut is simply this little plastic piece with a metal cone-shaped piece on the inside. And it turns down and jams the wires together. Now, just about every chandelier that you're going to buy made in America is going to have a pair of these at this connection. And I never use them. The reason is that there's not going to be two, but there will be nine wires. I have found through bitter experience that sometimes you don't get a good connection even though two wires are actually touching. You go and install the chandelier and seven of them light up, one of them doesn't. And you've already done all the work of getting it hanging from the ceiling and it's a little too late to be worried about the connection set. So in the Secret Underground Laboratory, what we do is all of our connections are soldered. Okay, I've got the splices made, trunk wires on this side, and all eight wires from one side of the bulb go here, and the other eight go here. Now, to solder this with a soldering gun or a soldering iron would take a tremendous amount of heat. It would actually end up melting some of the insulation before you got this much wire hot enough to, for the solder to stick to it. So we've got a slightly different method. What I have is a little pot that uh, contains solder, and a little stove to heat it up, and we'll just dip it in it. While the solder is heating up, I will take the time to put some flux on the wire. This is just kind of a uh, detergent. When it gets hot, it will wash away any grease or other oil that's on it. Ordinarily, when you're using a soldering gun for electrical work, the, the solder has this stuff already inside of it. But, uh, melting it in a pot like this, there's not going to be any. Okay, looks like it's hot enough now. <coughs> How many 
go. Two nice tight soldered connections. The final step in making the connection is to cover it in shrink wrap. And that's an amazing plastic material that when it gets hot draws down tight on the wires. I like to make a little booty or slipper cover up the end. Solid connection. Now, as I said earlier, when you're working on a chandelier where the wires can be seen, everything has got to be nice and neat. And that especially pertains to the way the wires are held down. color as close as possible. Just twist it down. It's nice and tight. Go ahead and finish the rest of it and come back and clip off all the extra tie wire as it goes along. It is a fairly tedious part of the job. But it's the one people are going to see. So you got to spend whatever time on it. It's going to take to make it look good. Before I attach the wires to the screws on the sockets, one very important step comes first. And this is critical. The ends of the wires have to be tinned because these are multi-strand wires. If you put them under a screw terminal, they'll just squeeze out, become a loose connection, and light bulbs that flicker, and worst case scenario, actually start a fire. And with the little solder pot, this makes what would be a very tedious job a little easier to do. I have to be careful not to splash this on my hands or something. Which would certainly be no fun at all. When I install the sockets on the nipples, I always use uh, some of the blue thread locker. Because these threads are just so lightweight, you really can't tighten them enough so that they won't come loose later on when someone's installing a light bulb that might be a little bit taking the light bulb out. It's a little bit tight and so this ensures that they'll stay in place for a good long time and then you can still get them loose if you have to. So once all the uh, wires are tinned, put the smooth wire on the brass colored screw. And the wire with the ridge on it was on the silver screw, just like you were doing the lamp. And again, for the same reason, basically, if there's not a bulb in the socket, the person who touches the shell is not going to get a shock. We get the rest of these wired up, find enough light bulbs to fill it up, and we'll give it a test. So, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. Thank you for sticking with us this far. And uh, wish you would uh, like and subscribe. Share if you can. 
to all your friends about us, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.